Recording in and so much you've done, and I think with a little help, I'll give it a try. So please forgive me, Lord, if I. Thank you for this day and for this gift. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. And we pray that you would have your way. Take control. Not our will, but let thy will be done. In the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would touch us in our bodies, our mind, our soul, and spirit. Use us as you so desire. Send your word under the anointing and power of the Holy Ghost. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. And since he's your supervisor, he's yours for the day. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to move on from that. I respect my brothers in the Lord too. Hallelujah. Now, if any of you fighting in your church, you need to stop it. Because if you're fighting, you can't go to hell and fight. You can't go to heaven with a bad heart and a bad spirit. your soul salvation and you need to do it in fear and in prayer. Whether you know it or not, Jesus is coming. And I want to be ready. Somebody said to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Amen. Well, then you got to live like John. You want to walk in Jerusalem like John. Yeah, that's right. Got to behave yourself. Yeah. I won't say this, though. Now, I won't say to all the parishioners, all the lives, the preacher's job is not to be I think some of y'all won't like it. The preacher's job is not to please you. His job is to please the one that sinned. And I won't say a word of caution to you. You better be careful. God said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. I had a church brother at our church years ago in Roper, North Carolina.
came from my father's church from Edenton. And she went off on my father. They were down there preaching for us, my daddy. And uh, she went off on him and disrespected him. And the people begged her not to leave that service without repenting and making it right with us all. But she went here. Went home. Fell with a stroke. That same night. You know what I'm saying? And for the rest of her life, she kept having stroke after stroke. Until she finally ended up in a home. Until she died. And God took her speech from her. Couldn't talk. And to sit in church and cry. Couldn't talk. Amen. I was down in Camden and I had one to come in there and talk like this. She said, if you ain't careful, somebody going to drag you out of here feet first. I was good with teaching the word. And I looked over in the Something came out of my mouth beyond my control. I said, if you're not careful. We'll be the one carrying out here first. Went home that very week. Stroke. Same night. And the rest of her life couldn't even be in the service. When she came to church, she had to sit in the back and leave before the service adjourned. And, and, and see, we preach ain't exempt from that either. Because God is no respect to person. Is that all right? I believe that's the word. Amen. So let us work out our salvation. It's time now to obey God. Now, I, I got a script again. It's a paper in front of me. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I want to call your attention to a very familiar passage of Scripture out of Luke's Gospel, big chapter. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to read a few verses. Verses 4 through 15 is our text, scriptural text. But let me read a few verses of the text. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up. Bear fruit and hundredfold. Yes. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Nothing fancy the parable of the soul. With God's help, I want to lift a few things up out of this parable 
that we may find beneficial for our spiritual growth and development. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus had been going from city to city preaching the kingdom of God. There were many and varied responses to his preaching. This parable is given to point out the various responses of the people that they made, amen, toward the preaching of God's word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody doesn't respond the same right. to the word of God. Amen. In fact, you may love it, there's always somebody who doesn't like it. A large crowd had gathered, and they had come from every city. Jesus spoke to them in a parable. The parable is a short and simple story given to illustrate a moral or a religious lesson or truth. In verses 4 through 8, the sower goes forth to sow his seed. He, so to speak, broadcast his seed all over the field. They didn't read about broadcast, no. Yes, In the old traditional style, we used to make up roads and hills and open up the roads and sow the seed down in the road. Right. They got to be ready doing things now. Yes, Even with the fertilizer, they just broadcast. Go right. oh, anywhere. Right. And he was throwing the seed everywhere. Because right. there was no shortage of seed. Jesus. The soul in this instance is the Lord Jesus himself. The seed is the word of God. The disciples came to Jesus and asked him why does he speak to the people in parables? Jesus answers that under you it is given, amen, to know the mysteries yes, sir. of the kingdom of God. Yes, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see, amen, amen. and hearing that they might not understand. Now, you've got to understand that this passage of Scripture comes from Isaiah. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Sixth chapter, yes, verses 9 following. Jesus, in short, said that he is teaching in parables so that everyone does not understand. He's speaking primarily to his followers. And it is given to them to know the mysteries of the thing. Now, I know that sounds strange to some of you. But what you need to understand what is happening in Isaiah is that God had sent his word time and time again. And the people rejected his word time and time again. In fact, if you read the passage on the road further, you will see that God, because of their sin, of rejecting the word of God, was one of punishment. And he would send them into captivity. Babylonian captivity. Amen. Don't you know that when you sin, it's going to cost you something? 
While I'm talking about that, I want you to know three things about sin. Sin will always carry you further than you intend to go. Secondly, sin will always keep you longer than you intended to stay. And thirdly, sin will always cost you more than you were willing to pay. Because he don't want you to hear no word. And we don't have 
the sensitivity to know what he's doing. Now, if you're standing there and you got something in your heart toward the preacher, you ain't bound to hear nothing he says. But God is still holding you responsible for the word that comes forth. Would heal many of us, but we are not receptive to the word. For the scripture says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Don't you know God wants to heal you? But you got to have open ears to receive. something with the word when you hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in Hebrews, he said, hey, the gospel was preached to them yeah. Yeah. just yeah. as it was to us. Yeah. But the gospel preached to them did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard. Yeah. You got to do something with this word. Yeah. Oh, praise his name. Yeah. Amen. I want to 
live right, then I do. Oh, don't worry about it. Come on. Come on. If I can cut this short a little bit. Now all of these souls, only one of them was not a believer. That was the first one. The one by the wayside. On the hard soul. And soon as it was sold, people trampled on it. And the birds, which is the devil, came and plucked it out of their way, before, out of their hearts, before they could believe and be saved. And they represent the unchurched, the non believe. Now all the other three can't go. Mm. All of the other three categories were believers. Amen. They believed and were saved. Hello. You better look at the book on that. That's right. Look at verse 5. Saul went out to sow the seed and he sowed. Some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down. Uh -huh. And the fowls of the air devoured. Yes, yes, they yes. ate the seeds up. Uh -huh. yes, yes. Before they could die, and before they could germinate yes, and spring up into new life. Uh -huh. Now look at the second one. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moss. Oh, you ain't never seen no plant spring up out the ground and it's not lit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the fact that it sprung up yes, means that it was lit. Yes. But something happened because there was not enough moss. I'm going to say the name if I start preaching the word. As long as I'm preaching, 
something that's all right with him. Go ahead, <laughs> You know, when I finish listening to the Thank <laughs> you. 
something from that? Yes, sir. I ain't trying to please people no more. Then I resumed being my wall fight. When I came off the wall, the field didn't satisfy
Selfie mit deinem I'm okay. I was sinking. Actually, it sank. Deep in the sea. Far from the peaceful shore. Sinking. Very deep red. Staying within. Seeking the ride. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters, he lifted me. Now, say, Amen. Softly. And I want you to come. 